Brown juice to make your fix. I don't care, Mr. Lane. Neither do I. What will it be? Brown juice, orange juice, tomato, or fix. Avocado. Why, avocados don't have juice. Neither do I, and I've been telling you that for the past four years. I 
like a whole hen cater. A whole uh, hen Never rains in California, Wing. You ought to know that. <laughs> Hi, Joe. How's everything, Papa Lopolis? Everything was okay. I'm cooking with gas. <laughs> oh, morning, Mike. Hello, Pam. What's this brat doing here? I told you to keep her home. I'm sorry, Mike, but the woman who takes care of her didn't show up. This well, then get one who does. This is no place for kids. I don't like you. I don't care if you don't. Please, Francis, you mustn't say such things. This is a free country. That's what the teacher said. She's only a child, Mike. That's what you think. She, she's... Why do you work for that kind of a man, Daddy? He's the best friend I have, Francis. You're wasting your time, Pam. That's what I keep telling Daddy. No, no, no. You go on upstairs. All right, but it's against my will. <laughs> Sorry. Are you sore? Not exactly. After all, you can't help it if she's your child, can you? Don't see how I can avoid it. One thing I'll say for her, full of vinegar. Say, I was worried about you. I was delayed. The elevator got stuck. What? Well, it was business. How was your home schedule? Any complaints? No. Uh, one thing went wrong, though. Jake Lucas didn't open up his stall this morning. What happened to it? I don't know. Well, if he can't open up his place, we'll get somebody who can. You go back up to the office. I'll check on Lucas. Any calls come in, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Right. Oh, thank you, Mr. Lynn. 
Howdy, Dreamy. Thanks, pal, for the cooperation. You took advantage of me just because I'm a woman. That's why I like you, just because you're a woman. I'm beginning to make out a few things. You're only guessing. You haven't a thing to write about. Well, maybe I haven't, but I didn't promise not to get the facts. When you get the facts, that's the time to write. I don't think you'll get it. So don't go sounding off and getting a lot of innocent people in a jam. I'm going to watch you, Mike. What do you think you've been doing for the past three years? But that wasn't business. For well, the first time, you're right. Now, goodbye. I don't know why I take this from you. You're not good looking. You haven't got a million. In fact, you're ahead. I'm tired, and besides, I'm prematurely great. And you're pretty. Shut <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> The market is your playground. I want you to keep your dirty paws away from me. Something go wrong? You know what happened. What's on your mind? I'm going to cool you off. You're hot, monkey. And heat will sweat us. Hey, stay away! Right. <laughs> Better be careful. You're so full of larks and you're liable to sink. and you've got three helpers. Only last week you said if business keeps up the way it is, you're going to rent another stall. Oh, I, I was only talking then. When a man gets as old as I am, he has no business working so hard. And anyway, I, I don't like the business. I'm sick of it. After 20 years, I don't believe you. What's wrong, Wilkins? No, nothing. Why, why, why should there be anything wrong? Well, it just doesn't make sense. Well, a man who loves this business the way you do? Well, that's the way it is. To, that's the way I want it. That's the seventh one that's walked out in three days. And two fires, too. First at the Williams Ranch and then the Invincible Dairy. And those trucks. It's crazy. The whole thing's crazy. Trucks just don't blow up. You're right, Bram. Trucks just don't blow up. <laughs> Mr. Lynn at home? Oh, you're the young doctor that lives on the fourth floor? Yes. Come right in, sir. Thank you. Oh, hello, Doc. Expected to see you at the hospital, Mr. Lynn. Oh, I've been too busy. Thought you might like to know how the patient's getting on. Well, how is Jake? He's improving. Fortunately, there was no fracture. The police were there talking to him this afternoon. Why tell me? Why don't you tell me to mind my own business? Why don't you? You don't mind if I like you in spite of your surly nature. Why do you always have to be on the defense? Well, now that you're here, why don't you sit down? Thanks. Oh, good evening, Miss Gregory. Hello, Mrs. Lane. Come in, gentlemen. Hello, Linda. Why, he ill? Oh, no. Oh, oh. Oh, he's a neighbor. You remember him. He took care of Lucas. What is your name? Gilbert Page. Uh, Doc Page? This is Linda Gregory. Hello, Doc. You gave me a scare for a moment. Sorry. And uh, this is Inspector Torrance, Sergeant Pringle. You should know them. Uh, they have something to do with the flat foot of the game. Make yourself comfortable, boy. Uh, sit down, Linda. Well, what's the occasion? I dropped down to the station. I heard the mistake to mention you. Gotta say, rub your nose, or I thought I'd come along for the ride. We talked to James Lucas today. So what? 
Not a thing. He wouldn't open up. None of them will talk. Listen, Mike, there's something going on, and it doesn't smell like lilacs. All those guys quit in the market. I hear the two fires, and a couple of trucks turn into and go right straight up in the air. So? So everybody shuts up like a clam. I ask them questions. They look at me dumb and innocent like. I don't like it. You're just sensitive, Inspector. No, inquisitive. Yeah, whatever his name is, Polak. Sister, he slipped on the floor and smashed up 20 crates of spinach or something. He's lying. They're all lying. What do you want from Mike, Inspector? I want the truth. Oh, I know what you, Mike. You, it's always a private fight. Sometimes there's too much at stake for one fellow to carry the load. Now, there's something going on. What the devil is it? You got me, Inspector. I wish I knew. Check me a stall. That's what it is. Supposing I were to tell you that somebody's trying to bust up the market. That's home in jail. Then what? Do they have to prove it or they want? I don't think you can prove it yet. I know I can't. Nobody can. You're a great help, Mike. Both of you. I'll lock you up if you talk. You would if you thought you could get away with it, but you can't. The law demands facts. And truth, Inspector. Oh. We'd have it if they talk. And you're the one to make. No, so. That all you got to say is Shall I give you a lift, Linda? Oh, thanks, Inspector. I'll be seeing you, Mike. Tough going, huh? Could be tougher. Need a friend? Well, I had one. Yeah. I don't feel that much, have I? I suppose you have no polish. Is that bad? Is that good? Are you still here? Afraid so. I envy you. Oh, we're old friends. Then I envy you twice. Once for an old friend, and the second time for the fright you're putting up. Are you kidding? No, envy a job, your work, and everything connected with it. You don't listen to that either, Doc. Who is more? Just a teeny bit here and there, piece of you. Patch up a fracture, find a few cracked ribs. You, you have to take care of the whole city. You help them to help. Right. It is an important job, especially these days. What are you two trying to give me? It's not just waving the flag, pulling you up and down a string of the crowd to watch. What you're doing is all unheralded. Nobody's going to pin a medal on you. You're kind of cracked on the subject, aren't you? I don't agree with you, Mike. Your market means a great deal to people in this city. I think what it means they just took the milk away from the children. Maybe they will. What did you say? Me? Hmm? I didn't say anything. You started this. Why don't you go home? Well, if you say I can come back again, well, all you got to do is knock, and if I answer, come in. Night, Mike. Night. Night, Miss Gregory. Well, Doc, watch the bike. Hello, Mike. What are you thinking about? Oh, that Doc. And you, sticking me up on a pedestal. What do you think I am? I know. Well, keep it a secret. It's embarrassing. Can't you take it? Yes, but I'm not used to it. Now, get. Good night, darling. Good night. Morning, Brian. Morning. Oh, uh, Mr. Moore called. What do you want? Said he wanted to see you right away. Let him wait. He's still the boss. I'm the boss. All right, I'll go and see Oh, I planted potatoes here someplace, but I can't find them. Oh, my darling, they don't grow on top, you know. You have to dig for them. to get things over and done with. The police commissioner dropped in on me last evening. There's been so many rumors about the market. Well, it isn't exactly a kindergarten. It's a legitimate enterprise, Michael, and there's no place for brawling. It's your job to put a stop to it. Well, it isn't as simple as that. 
As an attorney, don't you think it advisable to hear both sides of the story? There always are two sides, you know. Michael, don't you think you're being a little outspoken? You try right. If you listen, I'll tell you some things you don't know. Some of our old standbys are quitting business. And a lot of the farmers and dairy men have already folded up. Well, whose fault is that? Somebody's putting the pressure on, trying to muscle in. Muscle in? Yes. Make the farmers and commission merchants pay for the privilege of doing business. Somebody's trying to organize a racket. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, notify the police. You talked to the commissioner yesterday. When does he start? Well, all I can say, Michael, is if you're running the case, you will have to put an end to this family. Well, I'll do the best I can, but they're doing nothing against the law. Well, now, how about the attacks on the wholesalers? Simple assault. Any smart lawyer can beat that rap. No, it's strictly legitimate. There's no law that says the farmer here can't charge 50 cents for it. The difference goes into somebody's pocket. Oh, they can't do that. The prices are regulated. Well, I only know this, Michael, and I'm speaking to the syndicate. You'll have to take this matter in hand, or, or you'll get a new boy. Well, you see how we're situated? It's so full of red tape, it looks like a ribbon counter. And I tell you to get a new boy right now. Yeah, I'm sore enough to try and clean out that bunch of chiseling grapples. Michael, you sometimes are afraid you'll talk too much for your own good. Our food may come from the earth, but our men should be a little bit. I'd rather keep my feet on the ground. It's safer. Oh. Just a moment, my girl. Mr. Lynn, won't you come here for a moment? Just like that, huh? I'm Iris Moore. I understand you know something about vegetables. I wish you were wrong. I'm having trouble. Nothing seems to go right. Can you tell me what's wrong? Mm hmm You have ants in your plants. Never mind the garden. Let's talk about you. It's a very boring subject. I never heard anyone speak to father the way you just did. Maybe I was a little bit rough on him. Don't you ever talk to him like that? Oh, no. You should try it sometime. Most men like spirit. Most women, too. Well, I guess I'd better be going. Tell your father I couldn't wait any longer. I didn't have anything more to say to him, really, anyway. Yes, I could. Well, so long. Keep your onions straight. used to get a terrific bang out of an old tomato, I knew. And speaking of tomatoes... What are you doing here? It's about my onions. You told me to keep them straight yesterday. I followed instructions carefully, but you know what happened? No, what? Nothing. That's why I'm here. Mr. Mike, you're squeezing her too hard. Don't tell me you're going to be a pest. Mm hmm A ladybug. Where's your car? Back there. And that's just where you're going. Oh. Isn't that ugly? No. And you know it. Just the same, you're a pest.
Get him out of there, Pat. Come on, God. What happened, Danny? Somebody threw a brick. You see who it was? No, it came too fast. I wasn't expecting it. You've got to get out of here. But haven't I been helping? Sure, you've been swell, but just the same, you've got to get out of here. Beat it. I'll be back again soon. What happened to him? Uh, he'll be all right. Get him in one of the stalls and call the doctor. See you later, Danny. You'll never miss a trick, do you? Nope. Who is she? Oh, I don't know. Some kid wanted a job. She's cute. I got more important things on my mind. So have I. What's this all about? Hmm? Oh, just a personal matter. Danny got in an argument with another driver. Mike, if you could lie halfway deep to me, I could take it, but you can't. Why don't you lay off? Well, the people are fine. And if I lost my job, I have nothing to do. Danny, not yet. Look here, Linda. Mike! Mike, I I've got to talk to you. You don't want me to. That's the right answer. Yes, I'll be running along. What is it? There's been some trouble down at Ryan's Dairy. They've wrecked the refrigeration system. One thing after another. Danny's just been hurt, too. See if we get home, all right. Okay, Mike. Mike, I think they ruined everything. They poured some acid in the ammonia. We've been threatened, but I didn't think they'd go through it. One of us to raise the price of two cents a quart and hand it over. Two cents? Somehow I remember... The trouble started about two days ago. Some of our suppliers hiked the price of cans 50 cents. We paid them. No. Those who didn't had their milk dumped. Yeah. If I could only get some proof, I could go to Inspector Torrance. But first, I've got to get the proof. Brian, what does the shutdown mean? Very little milk for the city. Better get the plant fixed up. Well, when we do, they'll only mess it up again. Two cents a quart is the important point. Nothing's important except those kids get their milk. Will you stand by me? Well, now look, Brian. You and I don't matter. A lot of innocent people are going to take this rap. And I'm not going to let them down for you or anybody else. All right. The price stands. Thanks, Ryan. Now all we've got to do is deliver. Hello, Johnson. What's Johnson doing? Just handed me his notice. Here's one from Brown and Caraday, too. Anything else? Moore called. He wants to see you right away. He's at his house. Mike, something's got to be done about this right away. If this keeps up, there won't any market. Hello, Moore. What's the matter? I'm going to have that news for you. My shoulders are broad. I can carry a little more. Sir, they could have a meeting this morning. Uh, what is it? The trouble at the dairy is smashing up that truck and, and all the other things. What are you getting at? Michael, I hate to be the one to have to tell you this, but I can't let you go. I argued with him for over two hours, because in spite of all your faults, I still maintain you're the man for the job. Too many against me. I'm very sorry. Believe me, I am. Well, all right, you are wrong. You're a regular fellow out. Mm -hmm. We all have our faults. In the meantime, if, if I can be of any service... No, no, thanks. But I appreciate it. If you ever need me, call on me. I don't forget favor. And that's a good effort. Michael. Please call on me sometimes, will you? I hope this doesn't mean that we still can't be friends. I wouldn't miss it. And thanks for softening the floor. Oh, 
about me. You can take care of yourself, but there are a lot of others who can't. Let them worry about that. You mean let little babies worry, little kids who need their milk, and mothers who need fresh vegetables to feed them? I'll leave that to the humanitarian. I must have been blind. Me, running around, boosting you to the sky. Mike is this, and Mike is that. I'll tell you what you are. You're a hundred percent all right. You're a hundred percent healed. So, you're walking out on me, huh? No, I'm not walking out on you. You're walking out on yourself. Mr. Moore, you don't know Mike. He'd rather take the rap any time than give alibis. I'm sure he could get to the bottom of all this. I think so, too. Now, you've got the tangible facts, and then go straight to the police. Uh, Inspector Torrance, I think his name is. If things turn out as you say, well, we'll uh, only be too happy to talk these all over again, Mr. Lynn. I know Mike went to see a man named Craig, and then there was another one. I think it was Foster. Foster. I'm sure that if the police found these men, it might help clear matters up. Well, you'll get your evidence and then go straight to the police. And he'd get his job back? Yes, I'm not too sorry we'll ever send him away. I won't say anything to Mike just yet. <laughs> I shouldn't have blown up to the office. You hadn't? I'd have been disappointed. Come on. Well, it uh, <laughs> looks like I'm hostess for the evening. Um, would you like a drink? Yes, please. Well, 
said he'd be over in 20 minutes. He didn't show up. In about a half an hour, I got this call. They picked him up to the headquarters. Stranger, Lynn. Craig, I've been on the wrong side. That's quite an admission coming from you. I had to take quite a beating before I found out. I played the great emancipator. Got a kick in the pants for it. Then I found out it was a cinch to get that extra two cents for a quarter million. <laughs> well, you gave me the idea. You said it wasn't worth that much? I thought I'd show you it was. You did. I know a fellow that's got a little kid just Finally, first to buy milk for him. I could have given five dollars a glass. It was all sold out. You're right. The chump will pay. What are you going to do about it? I can set up that two cents and we can go from there. The boys at the market are all with me, even though I'm not there any longer. How do I know you're on the level? If I'm not, my life isn't worth two cents. We'll begin on that basis. And as far as we're concerned, I'm advanced. That's all right with me. And we stay within the law. We make the bullets, they fire them. I'll get your cut fixed up. You'll be plenty satisfied. I'm sure I will. Daddy with you? No, dear, he, he's gone away. When will he be here? Well, he, he asked me to take care of him. Daddy told you that? Mm -hmm. You don't like me. You scolded me. You scolded Daddy. Now you quit talking like that. Yeah, I'll take it. You leave her alone. My, my. 
Why, you've been a busy little girl, haven't you? Can I look at your book? Can you read? A little. This is my girlfriend. <laughs> Why, this is wonderful. Who drew these beautiful pictures? I did. <laughs> That's the funniest cow I ever saw. That's no cow. Oh, it's fun. What is it? A terrible dragon. You never saw a dragon. Oh, yes, I did. Where? Right here. <laughs> <laughs> And only you, the buyers of produce, can force these prices down. In my opinion, it is criminal the way they are making you, the taxpayers, carry the bug. Send in your protest, call in, do something. Help me to stop this racketeering, this hijacking of your person. I have taken up this crusade because of my experience, and I want you to benefit through that experience. Without cooperation, we can do nothing. In unity, there is strength. Everything under control? Not quite. Ryan has to go to court for no reason for that two cent price of milk. He should be able to do that. Oh, he can. Says the opposition is pretty strong. Syndicates against him. Ryan expects Jeffrey Moore to handle the case himself. He's smart. <laughs> we'll wait. You've done a good job, Mike. Now the next step is to get the produce boys in line. Oh, they're already on the hunt. There was a farmer over at Riverview who had to take a slight to lacking, but now he's willing to deliver his lettuce while we tell him. <laughs> we'll have the city eating out of our hands. Rather neatly put. And no ceiling prices to worry about. That'll keep the government off our trail. What about the trial? Well, you should cover that, don't you think? I wouldn't miss it. Order. Order in the courtroom. Isn't it a fact that you raised the price of milk immediately following the accident of your dairy? Yes, sir. But it wasn't because of the accident. You were intimidated, were you not? Sir, I have my dairy and I run it to suit myself. And how do you account for the sudden raise in your prices? Production prices have gone up. I have to pay more to the farmer. Distribution costs have risen over 20%. You know, things aren't as cheap as they used to be. If I can't raise my prices, I'll just have to close up. No witness. As a member of the board, did you approve of this increase? Have the merchants ever asked for police protection? No, sir. Do you suspect they are being intimidated? Well, yeah, okay. The same. Were your drivers ever threatened? The defense has conclusively proven the rise of the present mark. In view of that, I see no reason to sustain the injunction. The added price of two cents a quart has been definitely proven a necessity. Case dismissed. I've got a stake and hunch you're at the bottom of this holdup. That's a stupid thing for a cop to say. Especially when you let people get murdered and don't do anything about it. That's because we're up against some pretty low types of human beings. Like you, for instance. You'd double cross your own mother if you had one. Keep your hand off me. Mike! It's all right. I've already ordered. But you know what I wanted? I asked for the best. Keeping me happy, huh? I heard what happened. I guess there's no turning back for you now. Not after your little argument with Inspector Powers. I hate nosy coppers. They're a marked man, Lynn. You'll have to watch your step. I leave that to you. You clear the way. I won't stumble. I'll tell you this much, uh, Mike. Up to now, we didn't trust you. Why not? I haven't missed an angle. You still can give us a double cross. Perhaps we're slapping cops around. <laughs> I imagine we can trust you from here on in. And I think the big boss will tell you so himself. I'm not interested one way or the other. As long as I get my cut. Where did you get up, Where did you get up? 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 Where did you
Miss Devlin, too much isn't good for the child. For the child? For me either. I know who I thought I would. Sometimes I wonder. Here, I'll dig it. There, you're up, Mr. Teasy. I'm not allowed to issue some foreign to a taste. Remember, Uncle Mike? I've got to tell you a story before I go to bed. Oh, no. The last time I went to sleep. Yes, and I made off to wear my big doll. And did you look funny in lipstick? <laughs> Hi, Bob. Hi, back, Uncle Mike. There we are. Both. That stuff you'd never see me again. Never thought about it. What do you want? Mike, you've got to talk. Your father sent me away to the country. What's wrong with the country? Plenty. No guilt. Father doesn't want me to see him. Oh, that is serious. More than you think. But what if he finds you here in town? You won't see him, will you? Oh, yes, not. Where are you going to stay? Francis would like yeah, me. Francis would like anybody. But this isn't Grand Central Station. Oh, all right. All right. I guess I'll have to spend the night with Gil. Not all night. You'll spend most of the evening with me. Well, what are you all dressed up for? We'll come down to the U.S. soon. Oh, don't tell me you're going to dance with the boys. <laughs> oh, I should say no. No, they love my donuts. And that's the least I can do for the boys in the service. More than you ever did for me. Have a chair. Hello, oh, Mike. Hello. Mike, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll say good night to Francis. All right. Have a drink, Foster? Thanks. Nothing for him. He's had too much already. Huh. Everyone okay? Yeah. You got a date with a big shot tonight. Craig say so? Yeah. Looks like we'd be taking orders from you, too. We'll always be taking orders from somebody. Agreed, then. With them? Good night, sweetheart. What's your hurry, baby? Stick around a while. My kid's out tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes. Oh, yes. Mel Shaw, one of the commission merchants, wants to be going over. He insists upon cutting the prices. We want them kept up. Get over to my apartment as fast as you can. Yes, it's been an accident. Hurry up. Harris, you don't have to go back. Ah, forget it. I love trouble. Police headquarters. Yes, sir. Right away. Wait a minute. Headquarters. Just a moment, please. Go ahead, Mr. Lynn. Inspector Torrance. Hello, John. This is Mike. What's the matter, Mike? You know you shouldn't phone me. Yes, I know. Captain, listen carefully. I'm supposed to meet the frames tonight. But first, send someone out. Pick up Graham and Foster. They just left my apartment. I'll make the charge later. 
Not to make you stick this time. Okay, Mike. Get radio car 16. Have him follow Graham or anybody with him. They're at the Palms apartment. I'll be on my way. Have him phone me. Yeah, there are. Too fast, that. You'll have your fix up in a couple of minutes. Arr. Don't ask any questions. She's been shot. A little lower. Don't worry, darling. We'll take care of you. Oh, please, you. No, I don't want that. I won't talk to my Mike? Yes, dear. Put a call through on Inspector Torrance. Yeah. Reported everything. So he's in with the cops, huh? Foster and the boy still there? All right, have him trail in wherever he goes. That's all. Oh, Jeff, this is Ken. Something's happened. Oh. Well, he was reported to the police, has he? Oh. Going to turn me in? <laughs> oh, Ken, you almost missed a step then, didn't you? In just a few more hours, we would have walked right into the welcoming arms of the police. Now, let us know, Jeff. Yes, you know what to do with him, and don't waste any time. See you later. Mike, I hate to do this, but it should be reported. Gil, if anybody can save her, you can. It's got to be done this way. I'll take the responsibility. Mike, you're so far. You're playing You just won't. He has a meeting with Mr. Craig. Craig? Ken Craig? Yes. Yeah. You don't. Don't. It's all my fault. I will. Don't you worry. Good luck, dear. You're not leaving. This is your department. I've got another job. Good luck. Thanks, I need I will from now on. We're in the jam, honey. So you stand by. Yeah. Henry, I shan't need you anymore tonight. Uh, Mr. Lim, I can able for you. You're pretty clever, Moore. I lost my job and was very quiet. You know, 
You shouldn't come breaking into people's houses like this at this time of night. It's upsetting. I'll say, you're ready for a fall. I know now how the whole thing stands. Oh, yeah, that's very unfortunate. You have cigarettes? I hate to do this, Lynn, but you give me no alternative. Well, keep on talking. I'm interested in what you have to say. I've got plenty to say. You're pretty smug, you know, making that great talk over the radio. You are for the people. I'll say you are. You're for what you can get out of them. Talk about the fifth column. You invented a new one. The sixth column. With food, one of the most important items for our morale, you stand behind the flag, cheating the people, racketeering babies. They ought to hang you for treason, and they will. Well, you might get me more. But you'll never get 130 million people. 130 million that hate you and your kind and everything you stand for. <laughs> it's splendid. It's very, very dramatic. I have no idea you had it on you. Sixth column, eh? No, oh, that's a new one. And a good one. Too bad nobody will ever hear about it. What are you doing here? We found a man. Where's Foster? Oh, he's looking in, I guess. What happened to him? Oh, then nearly killed him. Made a pass with some gal. Hello, Greg. What's going on? The chief's taking care of him. Well, you better take Graham home and meet me at my place later. I want to take this in personally. It's too bad you didn't stick to your word and work with us instead of against us. Because now I'll have to put you out of the way. But if he's an attorney, I'll have to figure out a defense. Where? You were in my empire and I fired you. You hated me and broke in here for revenge. I shot you in self-defense. <laughs> it's bad publicity that I have a reputation and a good one. I'll be able to look it down. In the meantime, the sixth column will go on as though nothing has happened. But something did happen. Someone very close to you was hurt tonight. Iris was shot. Iris? That was rubbish. Iris is with friends in the country. I wish she had been. She was shot trying to save my life. Then you're lying. No, I'm not. She told me about you and Craig. She didn't know what she was saying, but I did. You're finished. You'll pay for the death of Graham. I know enough now to make you all walk that last mile. You're not lying about Iris? Where is she? Is she... Is she dead? No, she'll probably pull through. When she finds out her father. Strange how unimportant everything seems is now. Alice, the only thing I have to look for. Here first, Mike. I was coming to get you next. This is as far as you go. Poor old fellow. He had a lot to live for. I was listening to his defense. What good will that do you? He figured it all out for me. All except the end. That's where I used my head. He said you hated him. We're coming back for revenge, and he had to shoot you in self-defense, but he was wrong. You shot him, and then committed suicide. How do you like that? You don't frighten me, Craig. My life will be over in a second, but not yours. When they catch up with you, they'll march you up a flight of stairs. Somebody will put a black hood over your head and you'll cry. You'll beg for mercy. And those last few minutes will seem like a lifetime. Shut up! Mike. I killed a man. No, you didn't, Linda. You broke a vase.
can't adopt it. I don't think the court will let you have it. What's the matter with me? Nothing mentally, but I'm not physical. You see, Francis needs a mother. Oh. Do they care what she looks like? No. I've got one right here. Oh, no, you haven't. I don't mind taking care of a child, but I wouldn't marry you if you were the last man in the world. <laughs> You heard what she said. She won't mind. I will. Can you cook? Can you wash? Ain't it. Well, what can you do? Not you. You do. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> 